Hello friends, I welcome you in lecture number 2 on sampling distributions. In this lecture, we will discuss one question which is application of central limit theorem and this question was asked in GTU winter 2020 exam. So before going for this question, we just recall the central limit theorem which we have discussed in lecture number 1. Central limit theorem says that suppose we have a population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma then for samples of size 30 or more z equal to x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n is a standard normal random variable we have discussed this central limit theorem in previous lecture so that is the statement of central limit theorem in short central limit theorem says that no matter what the distribution of the population is if the sample size is large enough then this sampling distribution of x bar is approximately normal and if we standardize x bar then this z equal to x bar minus mu divided by sigma over under root n is a standard normal random variable so using this central limit theorem we can compute the probabilities related to sample mean x bar okay, suppose we are interested in this type of probability then using central limit theorem uh, we can standardize this we can construct this z so for that first we subtract mu and we divide by sigma over under root n so here we have x bar minus mu divided by sigma over under root n this is equal to b minus mu so central limit theorem helps us to calculate probabilities of this type suppose we are interested in the probability of this time this type then this is approximately equal to probability that z is less than or equal to b minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n and if we have greater than or equal to sign then this we can replace by greater than or equal to using central limit theorem we can calculate probabilities related to sampling distribution of sample mean so we will remember this central limit theorem which is applicable if sample size is large and that large number we consider as 30 or more so now we understand what is given question and how we can apply central limit theorem to answer this question the time to check out and process payment information at an office supplies website can be modeled as a random variable with mean mu equal to 63 seconds and variance sigma square equal to 81 so here the population uh, random variable of given population is the time to check out and process payment information at an office supplies website so that time is uh, the random variable for given population and it is given that mean of given population or uh, that is population mean is 63 and population variance is sigma square equal to 81 what is the probability that a random sample of size 36 has mean greater than 66.75 so uh, we have given that first we write down given that mean of population is 63 variance of given population is 81 therefore standard deviation will be square root of 81 which is 9 and we are asked to find the probability that a random sample of size 36 here they are selecting a random sample of size 36 from the given population and they have asked the probability that what is the probability that a random sample of size 36 has mean which is greater than 66.75 
so we have to find out this probability probability that x bar is greater than 66.75 so this is easy we know that if sample size is more than 30 here it is 36 then we can approximate this x bar using normal probability distribution or for samples of size greater than 30 x bar is a normal x bar is approximately normally distributed so if we define z equal to x bar minus mu divided by sigma over under root n then this is a standard normal random variable so we can calculate this probability by standardizing this statement so we can start with this probability statement probability that x bar is greater than 66.75 and by central limit theorem this probability is approximately equal to uh, we are standardizing this both sides x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n is greater than 66.75 minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n this we denote by capital Z so capital Z is greater than we substitute values of mean population mean which is given as 63 standard deviation sigma is 9 and n is 36 so here we div, uh, divide 9 by square root of n which is 36 and here we have to mention that this is using central limit theorem so we must specify the result which we are using so this is now probability that z is greater than uh, if I simplify all these things here I will have 9 divided by square root of 36 that is 6 and this is going to be 3 by 2 which is 1.5 so in the next step here we can write 1.5 and if I calculate this quotient it turns out to be probability that z is greater than 2.5 so this we can calculate using normal table standard normal probability table and uh, we can rewrite this as probability that z greater than 2.5 as probability that z is less than or equal to 2.5 okay, if you recall that normal distribution is approximately having bell shaped curve and uh, uh, suppose this is the value of mean that is 0 z equal to 0 here at the center and suppose somewhere here we have 2.5 so probability that z is greater than 2.5 is area to the right of this z equal to 2.5 so total area is 1 total area under the standard normal curve is 1 so this area is equal to 1 minus this area or we can write down that probability that z is greater than 2.5 will be equal to total area minus this area this area is probability that z is less than or equal to 2.5 so probability that z is bigger than 2.5 will be equal to 1 minus probability that z is less than or equal to 2.5 and this we can find using cumulative standard normal probability table so here I have uh, this cumulative standard normal probability table and I am interested in the probability that z is less than or equal to 2.5 all these values in the table are probabilities of this type cumulative probabilities so I have to search for z I have to search in this column and before that I can write 2.5 as 2 plus 0 
फाइव जीरो सॉरी हियर आई हैव टू राइट टू पॉइंट फाइव एस टू पॉइंट फाइव प्लस और आई कैन राइट टू पॉइंट फाइव एस टू पॉइंट फाइव जीरो दिस आई कैन री राइट एस टू पॉइंट फाइव प्लस पॉइंट जीरो जीरो सो आई हैव टू लुक फॉर टू पॉइंट फाइव बिलो दिस कॉलम अंडर जेड एंड हियर आई ऑप्टेन टू पॉइंट फाइव एंड दिस कॉरेस्पॉन्ड्स टू दिस क्वांटिटी पॉइंट जीरो जीरो सो आई सर्च बिलो जेड फॉर टू पॉइंट फाइव एंड इन दिस रो आई हैव टू गो अप टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो सो हियर आई ऑप्टेन दिस पॉइंट नाइन नाइन थ्री एट I repeat again. I am interested in probability that z is less than or equal to two point five. So for that, I can write two point five as two point five plus point zero zero. So here, under the values of z, I will search for two point five. And in this row, I have to consider the value which is below point zero zero. So I am searching for this value. Which is below point zero zero, and here. So this value point nine nine three eight is at the intersection of this z value two point five and point zero zero. So my value is point nine nine three eight. This probability is point nine nine three eight. So that I substitute here. One minus point nine nine three eight. And if I subtract this from one, my answer will be point zero zero six two. So this is the required probability. Probability that x bar is greater than sixty six point seventy five is zero point zero zero six two. So in this way, using this central limit theorem, we can find out the probabilities related to this sample mean. or we can find out the probabilities of the sampling distribution of sample mean so this question was asked in gtu winter 2020 exam for 3 marks and it is very simple we just have to remember central limit theorem which says that if we have a random sample from a population and if sample size is large that is n is greater than or equal to 30 then this uh, z equal to x bar minus mu divided by sigma upon under root n is a standard normal random variable so this is all about this session i hope you like it thank you very much